Okay, my name is um, Christian Wozniki from the Berliner Gazette. I'm welcoming you to the last panel of today and we're kind of switching back now to the whatever happened to journalism track that is part of this conference. Um, our, our general critique of the surveillance architecture today, I think, has a lot to do with uh, the centralization of data and it is, it is the big question of today which role media, mass media and which role journalism in general um, is playing in this whole context. I think we see a drift um, of web services um, you know, that kind of stand for this whole idea of giant data collections, you know, user tracking, data, etc. Um, those web services kind of moving into the realm of, of, of media and journalism. One, one very, you know, just one example being, you know, the Amazon guys buying the Washington Post, but I think we see a lot many more um, tendencies or developments in this direction. Web services kind of like conquering the field of journalism. On the other hand, we see um, journalism, traditional journalism, um, media houses um, turning more and more into um, web services or IT companies or something, you know, that, that, that think could, you know, kind of like compete with in the digital age. Adopting this model, you know, um, of, of the um, giant data collector, which is actually, you know, just basically also... Um, sort of like reinventing their tradition, um, the kind of like eyeball, eyeball model, you know, advertising for, for ages already being based on that basically already, you know, observing what the, what the user, what the reader, um, you know, is interested in and stuff, transferring this into the digital age. And, and one example in, in Europe, the biggest, you know, media house in Europe, Axel Springer, um, if, read about it a couple of months ago is, you know, like uh, going more and more into this direction. I think we will see more of that um, in the future. Yesterday at, at the, uh, our opening panel um, at the Seabase, um, we've, we've seen with, with Konrad Becker a speculative and, uh, vision of, you know, where, where this is kind of like leading towards to. And this is um, what Konrad Becker described as the military entertainment complex um, where those data regimes are growing and growing and where military interests and entertainment interests, commercial interests are interwining, and where basically something like journalism has disappeared. Obviously, this is um, a bit of a science fiction scenario, a bit of a science fiction vision, but as you know, good science fiction is always linked uh, to the present and is an observation or critique of the present and present tendencies. And We've seen yesterday with Sonia Song, the scholar from China, that um, you know certain aspects of this. She studies censorship in China, are already um, very much um, you know part of our present day already. And as Sonia has has pointed out yesterday, China is not an isolated case, and. Um, and we, we see those, those developments in, in not only authoritarian states. With Stefan Candia yesterday from Bucharest, we've um, introduced um, something that you could call, um, that could be an approach you know, towards like thinking about alternatives to this data silo scenario. And um, Stefan talked about Popovic, a platform in Belarus, in the authoritarian state, some call it the last dictatorship in Europe. And this web service, a money exchange platform, um, has been for a while, you know, one of the most visited platforms, um, web platforms in Belarus. It is run by activists from outside of Belarus. It is made for Belarusian people and basically a web service only, you know, to transfer money. I'm not going into the details. The interesting aspect of it is that it is also a window for uncensored news. 
It is a window for independent journalism in that country, something you know, that is very, very rare, and um, that this high visibility platform run by activists, run by independent people, is made possible. So this is just, you know, like also a starting point, as I say, to think about alternatives to data silos. And, you know, I mean, like with platforms like the Pirate Bay, for example, you may, or Wikipedia, other high visibility platforms that are not commercial web services, that are not based on the data collecting scenario, um, could be perhaps, you know, also offering in the future um, such windows for independent journalism. Today, we are exploring other alternatives to data silos, and I'd say they are, you know, way, way smaller, sort of, you know, also because those are projects or thinkings um, and ideas that just are at the beginning, you know, somewhere you, you need to start. And um, it is also, you know, like looking at, looking at the like, projects and ideas um, that empower the whole idea of decentralization and, you know, decentralization um, and decentralized networks and networking. So, um, two ideas basically, which also in, in, in themselves could provide an entry point, an entry way for thinking, you know, about journalism in an, in an age of data silos and an age of surveillance. It is also a little bit, I think, um, of, a, of a story um, of, of Berliner Gazette, and uh, we've been doing journalism for 14 years now, and um, we are journalists and we are users of, of web services and users of web tools that we ourselves haven't developed. So I think after, you know, like this very long period of, of, of using, you know, tools, we've just started to come to, you know, trying to think about how we could develop our own stuff that is, you know, interesting for us and also other people like us, you know, independent journalists and independent journalism um, collectives. So I'd like to hand over to Lilian Mazur from Lightmedian.de, a project by Sozialhelden. She's our moderator today. And um, yeah, I wish you um, an inspiring talk. Thank you very much. And Thank please you. welcome the panelists. Welcome everybody to this discussion. Um, the name is Alternatives to Data Silos, uh, Tools for Democratic Aggregation. And I'm really glad to um, welcome these three people on the stage. Here's um, Magdalena Tauber. She is from um, the Berliner Gazette, the managing ed editor. And she writes a thesis about online journalism. Yeah. <laughs> um, here to my right is um, Markus Hamidner but I I'm not supposed to say this name, it's actually Finn. <laughs> so Finn is a hacker from uh, Vienna and he is in a lot of projects um, for new format formats uh, for reporting and also um, he's involved in campaigns for freedom um, of information in Austria. And there's Anvan um, Roberts and she's an author and translator in the fields of um, science and technology. And um, her interests are databases and also the social impact of technology uh, on our society. Yeah, welcome everybody. <laughs> so um, yeah, now we're gonna start with you, Magdalena. <coughs> and you're going to um, present um, the ideas um, for your conferences because the Berliner Gazette had many conferences to, uh, in order to find some alternative platforms um, um, to Google and Facebook, for example. Um, so I'm glad that you are um, yeah. Thank you, here. <laughs> Lily. Um, I'm going to start off, hello everybody, um, with a, I think with a short question session so that you don't fall asleep. I guess you've been here uh, very, had a very long day. So my quest, first question to you guys is, uh, who knows what a hackathon is? Hands up, somebody has to know. Okay. Uh, I see a hand here. Can you explain in one sentence what a hackathon is? In one sentence. Well, it's supposed to be uh, uh, developers of usually software uh, sitting in a room for as long as it takes to get something working. Yeah? Okay. To get something working or to, to solve a problem maybe that they found out. Okay, cool. And who has been to a hackathon? 
Hands up. What? <laughs> okay, oh, f about four or five people. I expected a little bit more, but okay. And uh, next question is, who has been to a hackathon attending as a journalist? <laughs> so, <laughs> very small kind of hands showing just a little bit. I don't know, maybe because you don't want to tell us or... Uh, um, yeah, so that is interesting and that was also kind of a starting point for <clears throat> for Berliner Gazette to ask the question, um, what would a hackathon look like if journalists designed it and if journalists uh, kind of created the whole setting and if journalists come with their problems and, you know, so, yeah, what would that kind of hackathon look like? And, um, of course, journalists shouldn't, you know, do the hackathon by themselves. There should also be uh, some hackers involved. So, um, the question then would be, what could be a common goal for the hackers and the journalists? What could they do? What could they work on together? And uh, that is basically what uh, was the kickoff for Berliner Gazette, um, you know, these, these questions. And um, for, um, yeah, for a series of events that started in 2012, last year. So maybe we can uh, scroll to the first slide. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so in, uh, yeah, just one year and two months ago, we had this conference, um, Digital Backyards. Uh, yeah, maybe you see some people who are also here now. Um, that took place in uh, Künstlerhaus Betanien, and uh, the title is kind of self-describing. It was the first attempt, you know, to kind of appropriate the whole hackathon idea for us as journalists. So we brought together many people from Europe and also from other parts of the world to think um, of uh, ideas, of alternatives for, um, for Google and Facebook. And, you know, this kind of question sounds like we were looking just for another Facebook or another Google, but at that point uh, of time we were thinking, uh, of course, an alternative to Google and Facebook uh, should look different than these, uh, you know, um, big companies, you know, uh, an alternative to Facebook should not be just a Russian Facebook. So um, maybe you can push the scroll button, please. <clears throat> so, and we were thinking that the, the potential and, you know, oh, okay, <laughs> it looks a little bit broken, but, uh, uh, I think I can explain anyway. The potential for um, for the alternatives are they they are already there and they lie within the digital backyards, so to say. So in the tinker garages and the hacker spaces, and we were trying to bring these people together to think of um, of alternatives to Google and Facebook, and we did that here in Berlin. And then um, you know it was the first attempt to bring together hackers and journalists and um, then, yeah, we had our first experience with that and uh, we took the whole thing to Japan, actually. So we had kind of a cross-cultural experience with that and it was very, um, yeah, interesting to work on, this, on the same ideas but with people from a totally different background uh, from, from Japan. And uh, that was in uh, last January, so it's, uh, yeah, only 12 months ago. And now scroll. Let's see what it will look like. <laughs> so, and by then, this is like the third tri uh, yeah, stop on our journey to becoming uh, experienced uh, hackathon organizers, I would say, and in May, we organized this, uh, this little thing called uh, Bottom Up and Open, uh, a workshop. Uh, you see here, this is uh, the backyard of our office, of Berliner Gazette office here in, in Berlin, in Prenzlauer Berg. And um, so, you know, we were working and we were bringing together people again. And uh, this time we we're also really trying to, to get more coders for our, um, for our event. And uh, also, again, the title um, explains itself. So at that point of time, 
we were thinking, okay, um, <clears throat> the things we develop, you know, we come from the kind of grassroots publishing with Berlina Gazette, and uh, we're not like Spiegel or Zeit, we're not a big company, but we're like, we see ourselves as uh, alternative uh, media. So um, the things we develop, they should also be bottom up, like they should also be grassroots and they should uh, be open, open software, free software. So, and uh, that was in May and uh, until then, um, I have to say most of the hackathons were uh, thinkathons, you could say. So we were uh, thinking a lot and, uh, you know, bringing together ideas and, you know, um, getting to know each other and people were coming again. I think some uh, of the people really came to all of these uh, three events, even to Japan. Um, <clears throat> uh, and I think that was, uh, yeah, kind of a starting point for, okay, now um, the thing kind of has to, you know, uh, get more practical and more hands-on and we really have to develop something. And that happened in, oh, one month ago, I think, in December. Next slide, please. Scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next one. Yeah, here you can see. Yeah, so um, that was in November when we had uh, our complicity event. Maybe some of you uh, have been there. It took place at Supermarket, Supermarket Berlin uh, in Wedding. And um, so I think that was the starting point maybe of, of something new. So it, it took us like three kind of workshop conferences to, to kind of appropriate the whole hackathon model for, for us as journalists and to really uh, bring together coders and journalists. That was one of the experiences that this is not such an easy thing as you would think. And um, I think now Finn will explain more about the complicity event. Yes. Hi. So first of all, two things. One, sorry for the slides. This happens if you take away the laptop in front of the speaker and put it somewhere back there. Second, could we full screen the browser? That would be great. And just use the left and right arrows to switch between slides. That is much easier. So, exciting. And next slide, please, using the right arrow. Exciting. So, uh, for complicity, uh, Magdalena and I uh, facilitated a workshop for like 25, 30 journalists, um, focused on uh, aggregation and the visibility of grassroots publishers slide. Um, and we, next slide. Just use left and right arrows. Okay, uh, and that's that's our, basically our starting point. Um, how we discovered that, first of all, bloggers tend to form their own silos uh, of content. They they tend to not exchange content, um, and uh, there's no um, there's no agreement on what they actually want from, since, since there's so many different approaches to blogging and create, creation of alternative content, there was no agreement what, what they actually need or want from uh, better ag aggregation systems. And so we had two questions, which would be on the next slide. Woo, we're getting better at this. Exciting. So, I, could, I can read this to you. How can we wanted to see how we could make network working filtering and circulation more democratic, personalized, and better, um, which which is basically everything but the news gathering. So a, a newspaper does news gathering, but also kind of layouts their things and uh, takes care that content actually reaches eyeballs. And 
as bloggers, we've kind of appropriated the content creation thing really well, and there's really good content out there, but it's sometimes it's hard to uh, find good content, or if, if it's out there, find from that content new related things. Next slide. And uh, for the workshop, we also wanted to uh, serve users better and make sure independent producers reached more eyeballs, basically. Um, the background for this was, next slide, that um, yesterday's key terms were distribution and syndication. Um, and that maps really well to today's buzzwords of filtering and aggregation. Um, and filtering would be uh, making sure the right content is displayed, and aggregation would be actually collecting content from multiple sources. Next slide. And there's spectra for each of them. There's online, you can have algorithm only, um, Con filtering or aggregation, you can have social informed or pure social um, experiences. Uh, for example, on Facebook would show you in your news stream um, is basically an algorithm deciding what to show you based on the information they have about your social life. Um, a news reader would be purely social because it just shows you the streams of content you have ma added manually, so you've told it basically, that's, that's the thing I want to see. And there's really interesting complex algorithms out there. Google's PageRank, before they introduced the whole social search thing, was purely algorithm-based, for example. Um, and for, for the workshop, we had um, three challenges for our participants, um, basically to fuel the Im imagination, um, and the would be on the next slide. Uh, one would be a plugin for blogging systems that would uh, connect in some way grassroots publishers, um, helping them share content, especially if it's Creative Commons or public domain licensed. Uh, a second thing was a more conceptual question of how would a newswire look like for, um, for alternative media or for independent media. Um, newswi newswires like the AP or writers were the really great idea of multiple newspapers that they can't cover everything, but they, they can share resources to cover some things better that they would not have independent resources for usually. And the, the third would also be a concept of how to keep up with updated content. Uh, you've all used content that is regularly updated before. Um, I bet, because I think every one of you looked up something on Wikipedia, right? Um, now, would, it would be interesting to see, to be notified maybe, if of changes in Wikipedia articles you've read since, uh, you know, you may have read incorrect or incomplete information, and being notified of changes in that would be interesting. Uh, news outlets also publish um, updates to stories sometimes in which they correct, um, correct the mistakes. And if you don't usually get notified, especially nowadays where you don't read the whole newspaper and read through the uh, corrections section maybe on the next day. So that were our three challenges. And I think that's it from my side. And we spent two days uh, intensely working on that, trying to um, make groups around these issues and had two results we want to present today. Can we get to the next slide? Um, and the first one would be uh, Bubble Up, a concept by one of our groups, uh, and for which I want to introduce a guest presenter tonight. Next slide. Uh, Brian Abelson from New York uh, left us a video that introduces the whole thing. To come up with kind of like a, an open article recommendation engine, 
And the two things we wanted to address with that is that, uh, one, um, most ways that articles and content are recommended to you are, are not transparent. You don't know the logic and the assumptions that go into them. Uh, so when you're on Google News, uh, what uh, articles that are being displayed to you are determined by certain personalization algorithms, but you don't know how they work or what um, logic is implicit in them and what their um, sort of underlying goals and ambitions are. Uh, so that was one problem. The second problem was that we also wanted uh, to expose the, the sort of logic of a recommendation algorithm to the user so that they could uh, express their preferences for the articles that they wanted to see. So we came up with this thing called Bubble Up. I wish I had a pretty logo to show you, but I don't. Um, and the idea, this is really ugly, but the idea is that you would have all these different parameters, like how much an article was shared on social media, how readable an article was, how long an article was, uh, from the, the location, from where the, the paper um, is based, um, and then how relevant an article is to the current article you're reading, and then some things like emotions, um, sentiment, and uh, some other sort of um, textual um, features. Uh, and, and the sort of idea here is like you could be reading this thing on BuzzFeed, every world map you've ever looked at is wrong, it's very sort of uh, plebeian, it's like simple, uh, but then you might click bubble up and you get sent to this like blog post by someone who basically wrote the same thing but with a more academic perspective. Uh, and that was sort of the prompt. Um, what we accomplished is uh, 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 basically a database of articles uh, that's, uh, that's only English for now, but that could be expanded. And what you can do is, uh, this is an API that you can then query and say, uh, for instance, I think social media is very important, but I want you know, things that weren't shared at all. And you get a certain number of articles. Or you could say, I want very readable articles, uh, but, um, or sorry, maybe I want unreadable articles. <laughs> um, and and these things can all be returned, and then you could you know serve up these articles to someone. So that that's sort of that's what we accomplished. So Finn, maybe you can just uh, explain a bit more how is it, how it works. Um, it's basically about um, building your own algorithm for news articles and sort of circumvent. Um, the algorithm of other search engines. So can you just explain what do I need and how does this all works? But Bubble Up is just a tool, what's not developed, it's not finished, but it's an idea, yeah? Uh, some, some of the things they've shown here actually work already. Some of, some of them don't. It's basically a two-part thing. One part is um, they wrote, the group wrote, uh, a had a database of online publications that uh, have and made a list of all the articles the online publications had published. That was a t list of like 20,000 articles they worked on. And they, um, that's the back end and it analyzes these articles in different ways. And the front end lets you uh, basically input your own uh, preferences in what you want to see. It's a recommendation system based on one article for you to find interesting new other articles. Um, what they, they wanted to, you to do is, usually when you see related articles on a website, it's, it's the, maybe the most shared articles or just the most similar. Um, they want you to to give you knobs to turn basically on do you want articles that were shared a lot on social networks so they've received a lot of attention already or do you want similar but not shared new articles that kind of lets you break out of your own filter bubble maybe um, another option would have been a location do you want 
articles from the same geographic location, the same city or, city or country, or do you want articles on a similar topic but from from an, an outsider perspective, from outside of the country? Uh, same languages, different languages. These are all knobs you can basically turn in as as if as a main feature instead of being just implicit in the programming of the algorithm. Uh, it was kind of also conceptualized as a thing, a tool for escaping the filter, the filter bubble. Um, and one interesting part of the process, can we have this ne next slide please? Is the, the group created personas for, for designing the, the thing, like what, what would be possible users for, for that project and what, how would the settings look like? So just to understand and target the users, users better. What they ended, actually ended up doing is include these, these personas and the settings as presets for in the final product. So you don't have to kind of twist every knob to get what you want, but you can say, I'm like the prof, I, I might fit the profile of the teacher that kind of likes the academic perspective and likes, uh, but likes things that, was, that were shared a lot. Or the anarchist uh, perspective that was, I, I don't remember exactly, but uh, l less shared ones and more extreme on the political side were the, the knobs that were turned on that one. So that was an interesting process from get, going from design to product and just taking a lot of the design input with them. So maybe there are already some questions in the public about this project. Have you ever heard of something similar? No. <laughs> so it's totally new for you, maybe, yeah, over there. Part of it is it is theoretically working, but it's not launched per se. This is why we are here. So we are looking for you, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, so we go on to the next project. Um, it's called Tages Klau, uh, and it's a sort of um, yeah, a game of words with Tagesschau, but it's different. So maybe you can explain, Anvin Roberts. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, could you uh, put on the next slide? Um, so, well, f for us, the, the complicity uh, workshop that we, we started. Um, could you uh, could you f switch one, switch down one, one slide, and another one? So our basic idea was um, Tagus Cloud. Obviously, it's a silly pun. Uh, our idea was just to like create our own small news news reader, like an alternative uh, to to Google News but using different different sources. So um, we started a small small discussion and I just got a few quotes for you as an impression. Um, what was like, what the first motivations were for us to develop this, this uh, little practic more practical application. Um, public interest, it's, it's always the strongest players that are determining what's, what's relevant or uh, what's, what's coming, especially in like newswire context. Um, in a way, it's like a consolation for, for freelancers like me who don't have access to normal news agency on a regular basis. So um, even for like staff editors, it's not necessarily high quality um, doing the service they actually need. They say, oh, it's a, it can be a lot of PR rubbish, and um, often there's like the, the publication rhythms and the classic like news flow coming from agencies. Is is considered almost like tedious. So uh, in, in a way, it's quite a luxurious position to say, what do we actually want for us professionally or um, from like personalized news, news context? Um, one impression from Ilya who said, at Carter, well-known blog here in Germany, uh, we're not actually looking for authors. We're, we're looking, at, well, we don't need more news as such. It's um, Regarding this question, filtering versus aggregation, I think for us it was, became clear that um, actually filtering is a lot more powerful and relevant to us uh, if we're talking about something which we want to use as, as journalists or te uh, 
hackers uh, to control our own news flow. Um, and also some like techie, more techie input, I think. Um, if you enjoy sites like Reddit or Hacker News, it's quite different how, how they're like balancing uh, news and current, current information. Um, they use an upvoting system. So uh, Mikhail who said, well, the rules are simple, just don't upload any rubbish. Uh, or at least if you do, it won't get upvoted. So in a way, you could say, um, the kind of Reddit model, is there something there for which can maybe, uh, which is maybe valuable for, for journalism also? I, I believe there is, and I think there's quite some benefit in finding like technical little switches. Um, could you put on the next slide? Um, so what we, we started talking about um, was just very simple RSS reader tool. Um, just RSS, I think immediately after it became uh, well, well, better known. Uh, it's become a, an important tool for journalists, and I think it's it's clearly uh, because you can t t fine tune your own interests, and basically uh, that's the sort of function that we wanted to to um, to share and to show in a more sort of technical sense. So, um, the the inventor of RSS was in fact one Aaron Schwartz, who's, who was a di digital activist and hacker who uh, committed suicide in. January this year and in a way I think um, maybe talking about these tools there's also a way to think about well what kind of technologies do we want to be using is the tool in any way political so I think something with, with RSS if we're talking about democratization of, of content and um, sharing there is a lot of mentality and ideological and also political question <coughs> at, um, attached to this um, so I think we just started talking about these, these aspects and tried to find out what do we want to do. And the basic idea was to just do sort of non-commercial alternative newswire, like that's not primarily di directed at, at, at readers, but more at, um, for editors, um, independent media themselves, for us as ed editors, whatever, and can, yeah, basically serve as a sort of alternative newswire. And so uh, we, well, split up and into a little t content team who selected RSS feed. So we decided to do a whitelist to actively pick grassroots publishers, blogs uh, with, certain, with certain criteria, which I can, you know, show you later. Um, and to integrate these RSS feeds using Yahoo Pipes, which is just a pipe system, and to put it into a little... Um, just demo site and for me this was quite nice because I'm a journalist I'm not a hacker I was sort of pushed into doing the you know, git push and commit and things which I wouldn't normally do so I think it's really good that you have to get out of your own like comfort zone and for instance this uh, Yahoo pipes I think it's an interesting tool I hadn't you know looked at it before and that was just a good opportunity to get into a few things uh, could you maybe show the next slide um, yeah, that's just a, a demo which should be should be running. So this is the, the website itself. We deployed it just as a little web app. Uh, the, I'll, the URL should be down there somewhere um, via five apps, and the code is on on um, on GitHub. So. Um, these are basically just various sources that run together, and you can pick what section you want to include or exclude at the top. Um, here you can see chats, uh, blogs, Berliner Gazette we included. Um, so this is basically just, next slide, maybe. I mean, you can see that's, um, the demo is uh, the Tagesklau URL is up there and the code is is public also so you can look at what we did um, if you're interested our basic idea was um, yeah that you can easily expand this tool maybe even in a context for, for sharing with other with other editors or with other associated media you say like if there's an article in Berlin Agatzeta that you could develop like a widget or a sidebar tool sort of based on this which you'd just need a slightly different technology, obviously, but you could somehow continue this. Um, we haven't done that yet, I mean, due to time, but at least we did a little, you know, demo show uh, version of how it could run as a, as a web app. Um, so I think uh, regarding these, these sources, the question, make your own newswire. Um, 
I think it's quite, well, like I said, almost luxurious. Um, it's a very worthwhile thing to do, and I think in a way it's a good replacement for maybe other services that freelancers, independent media, don't have access to as easily. And, um, yeah, I hope the concept is somehow extendable, that we can maybe, you know, develop other ideas based on this. I, for instance, like to have something comparable for my own area, which is, like, science and technology. And, yeah, I hope we can maybe talk about what you think or what can, you know come out of these kind of little, just initial ideas. Yeah, cheers. Thank you, Anvin. Um, my first question would be, um, you, would, you were talking about a um, newsreader for grassroots journalism. Um, how does it include also the traditional media? And who's actually deciding which uh, platforms are supposed to be in there? I mean, there's a group behind, mm -hmm. and it's not maybe so personalized. So is there, are there any ideas to personalize it more? To personalize it even more? Yeah. Well, obviously, our selection, like which we just said, pick a, like, a web of trust or... Um, associated, like friendly or meeting certain requirements. We, we're looking, for instance, for a Creative Commons content, which isn't very easy to do in a sort of systematic way. But for instance, we, um, yeah, we made sure that these were grassroots, independent, also financial, uh, well, politically independent. And um, in case, like for instance, the Tats uh, we included because it's a Genossenschaft, uh, like public, I'm not sure how to, not what, the, what the appropriate, uh, okay. what, what the comparable term <laughs> is, but um, I think this whole, yeah, make your own news wire idea is, is interesting because, precisely because it can be so fine-tuned, even if you're working in different areas or you have like two different jobs, for instance, you can, you can just tune your news consumption, you can um, look more at the filtering that you yourself want to apply, and I think that's very much a benefit of, you know, using RSS or just simple tools for that, precisely that purpose. And if you look at, you know, Google Reader, which was discontinued, I personally miss it. Um, a lot of these, like, more news-based services have, in a way, been replaced by just social media feed, which just sort of flows past, and I think there are, you know, there are other ways to still yeah, continue this kind of personalized content mm -hmm. and presentation and, yeah, sharing. Okay. And who's the target group? I mean, yes, journalists, <laughs> but maybe another target group for this program? Could you imagine something else? Well, basically, um, the principle is, is expandable a lot, I think, or whatever you like, basically. I mean, you can... Um, this pipe principle is very simple. You can just like pour as many sources as you like into it and it will create like one object. I mean, a pipe, like in, in, in programming terms, it just means an, an object which sort of represents a function running elsewhere. Um, and so basically you just get the results of that and can integrate it into a, a search, a widget, or even yeah, a web app, whatever you like. Um, so you want it to be a tool that can be changed for your own, um, yeah, interests. Yeah, uh, we did. We did specify that, uh, like our original idea was that the target group is journalists themselves, or, or media people Myself, themselves. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, yeah, I just this maybe could I just be, can, you know, can, yeah, add to that because. Uh, it could also be like there, a combination. Yeah. I mean, for instance, Berliner Gazette working with, with different uh, media, like sharing content also. It's a way of, you know, sharing what do maybe other people have at the same time. Because um, the, the, the demo, the Tagesklo, is, is real time. It gets the le last hundred results or something from the selected feeds. Um, you could obviously use this to do content sharing in a way and say, you know, what do our media partners have on the same topic? right now yeah. so yeah what was interesting about it is that you asked that about the target group and this is kind of um, maybe economic standpoint you know uh, target group was us we wanted to create something that helps us as grassroots publishers to because um, you know the, the whole topic is the data silos and uh, are there alternatives to it 
And you know, if I uh, search for certain articles about topics that interest me, you know how the Google News Reader or the works. You know, the most read articles show up first, and uh, interesting stories that show up in uh, alternative media won't show up. So that was, uh, I think, basically the idea to to bring these uh, articles forward and to have your your news reader that is uh, based on your on your preferences and the preference at at our hackathon was of course the, the grassroots publishing community and uh, um, from the coders perspective the yeah also you know there's no grassroots coder maybe but you know like the open source and free software developers that kind of people that leads me to the next question um, what do you need now like which persons, um, what sort of tools, technology? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's a good uh, like um, point to to open up the discussion for the for the audience. Uh, you know, that was just a short presentation of what we did at the at our conferences and workshops and hackathons. And um, uh, what we learned was that uh, hackathons are beginnings and not endings. So I think this is. Uh, you know, just the starting point, and we wonder, uh, yeah, with our experience that we have now, what w what should we do next? Like, should we take this stuff to a university and you know let you know let, like a lab or something, and uh, let them try to to figure it out and you know develop it more, or should we like do uh, fifteen more hackathons or and that <clears throat> was kind of my uh, hope that we could like talk about that tonight. What what uh, you guys would suggest to do next, or if you think just throw it into the garbage, you know, <laughs> you could also say that. So, yeah. yeah. The question is also, do we need another news reader? Are we already annoyed about all this search engine rubbish? <laughs> um, yeah, what is your opinion? Yeah, so maybe it's already late. <laughs> um, yeah, this is um, just to, we, we can talk about how to combine the maybe the Bubble Up uh, project and also the, the Tagus Cloud. So have you ever th um, thought of this? this? Including the comments into the news article? Well, I don't think anyone has talked about this, but it they would certainly complement each other. Um, one other point is that um, one part of Bubble Up is definitely going to be used for research, namely the the part that collects content from all kinds of different media sources. So some some people are using that for like research on what kind of content is published and how much it's read and shared. So. There's definitely some use of that, of the products that we made in the two days, but um, otherwise, good question. Okay. So you're looking now for other journalists um, to work on this project, or developers, or <laughs> what we're going to do next? I mean, there are so many um, interesting projects going on on conferences, but it's always that we are in this sort of bubble, and we're talking to each other, and we are all sensibilized for this um, subject. but. Then we go out and then we forget about it. So what do you think? Well, I think uh, it's a good point that like uh, this Hacks and Hackathon, Hacks and Hackers Hackathon uh, was a good good starting point. And I do see, you know, a lot of, yeah, opportunities for things to be developed or just given another spin altogether. That's, um, you know, what I was saying. Like for me personally, I maybe, you know, just want to, Develop a, a similar vid widget for for science blogs that are that are relevant to me because that's my my area. So I think um, I'm not really probably the kind of person who does a lot of publicizing or um, sort of multiplication stuff. But I think um, there's definitely a way of get, making smaller or even individual you know spin-offs. Definitely, uh, but I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I think a few of the, out of the group from Complicity are also here today. I don't know, it depends what, what they say maybe also. Um, 
So you can discuss it later on the bar. <laughs> so if you're interested to develop something, just go on stage later and you can talk about it. And maybe that, um, that we don't have any questions anymore can show that maybe we don't need a new reader. New re I don't know, maybe <laughs> we are just so satisfied about everything what's going on. So um, I don't know. Do we have a, any questions? <laughs> no. So um, yeah, maybe everything is fine right now. We don't need a new hackathon. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Christian, you want to say some words to Hello Bird for tomorrow? Because Christian is actually, um, you have a project for tomorrow, a workshop maybe? Yeah, we have a couple of workshops tomorrow at the Heinrich Böll Foundation um, starting during daytime. One of them is presenting um, a group of journalists from Bucharest, the Sponge, um, they're a very interesting laboratory for innovations in the field of journalism, cartography and mapping and data journalism. They are um, at the Heinrich Böll Foundation at 3 p.m. and um, yeah, offering kind of a workshop that takes three hours long. We have guests from Prague, um, from the Ushahidi network of crisis mappers and we have also a data journalist from Paris who will join us there and we will basically go into like issues of like you know of ways of collaborating getting really practical what we can do together what can a, a laboratory like the one in Bucharest um, you know also serve you know to the public uh, how can it be approached how, you know what are the points of entry to it um, and uh, we will figure all this out tomorrow and hope to see you there. I see Christian also coming um, into the room. I just explained about the, uh, the workshop with um, our guests from, from Bucharest, Paris and Czech Republic. Um, I think there is something else also happening tomorrow at the Heinrich yeah, Foundation. Thank you so much, Christian, for already you know, pointing out this wonderful open workshop tomorrow. Unfortunately, do I have to say that you know, is it already closed? Or? I think we had too many regist registrations. Uh, applications I mean, so I would say, if, yeah. if you still want to take the chance, take the chance, because always, as you know, you know, many people apply, but then they don't come, and so on. Yeah. So I'm sure you said you wanted to maybe to uh, make two. Uh, May, yeah, maybe. we could. I mean, we could handle even a larger crowd than we kind of like, okay. yeah, conceived Super. of. So yeah, this Great. this is possible. And also, I mean, if if you don't have time tomorrow to come on Sunday, you can also, as Lily said, approach us now about possibilities of, for collaboration. But yeah, tomorrow we have three hours time, and we figure something out. Great. Okay. Bef before I will pass this microphone to the wonderful lady next to me, the curator of this whole day, and you know, a lot of other stuff we did in the last three days. I just want to shortly point out that uh, for one thing, thank you so much for being here. I know a lot of faces I see through the whole day and uh, you sat with us here and I had the feeling that it was much more than just, you know, consuming conference something, but I had the feeling that there was a lot of, you know, common, common knowledge and, and common interest in the space you could feel that. I thought also the respect that you gave to all the speakers who were, who were here in the sense of, you know, really adjusting to the space as it is different from usual conference spaces. Yes, I want to thank you very much for this because I thought it was really like a union together and not just, you know, a conference. So, thank you. And I would like to point out that tomorrow, right here, there's the next conference called Whatever Happened to the Hungarian Theatre which, well, look in the internet, www.böll.de slash theater uh, you know what I mean, Ungarn. Um, we, we speak about democratic problems uh, as seen through the eye of the theater world in Hungary. Very interesting issue. We have great guests here tomorrow. So um, if you're interested, come by. And now I just pass the mic to Jardine. Thank you very much, Christian. I have not much left to say apart from also saying thank you to you all for attending on my behalf. 
and um, also not just for everybody who was here with us today in the room, but I know a lot of people watched via stream too, so thank you for everybody that was virtually with us today as well. Um, also again, a big thanks to our partners, uh, the Bergeliner Gazette for organizing the fantastic opening yesterday, the final session today, and the workshop that I hope many of us are here and uh, the others who have signed up for it are looking forward to tomorrow. And um, I can't think myself a good... <laughs> Thanks to Mind Pirates, to the wonderful people, to Ralph and all his team, to Andrea and all the others who are out there. Yes, forgive me not to name all the names. Thank you so much. And also, thanks to Digitale Gesellschaft. Uh, you know, a lot of members have been here, have been on the panel, have helped uh, to create this event. Wonderful. Thank you, and of course, also a really big thanks to the team um, from Bo and the others who've joined the team. Um, um, yeah, Marion and Gary and Kat and Karin and everybody who's made this. Renee. Renee. Renee back there, also to the team technicians, and you know, Annika. See. So everybody who's made this possible and a really fantastic event. Thank you so much. Okay. So, and enough thank yous. I just want to say that um, we really appreciate you being here and we also hope that you will have a continued interest in all these topics and be active on them yourself and like I said earlier I really recommend checking out the organizations that we had represented here today on the panels <clears throat> looking at their work seeing how you can support them or how you can um, engage in some other way yourself and uh, also of course watch out for the we'll be posting all the videos um, from today as well as other documentation on the bell website so hopefully you can follow up with that and we hope to see you tomorrow of course and at the next mobilized event thank you <laughs>